Hello Internet, Retro Kevin here. Today's video is going to be a little different from my others. It's going to be part one in a multi-part series. I have a couple Commodore 64s. One works, but is in rough shape, and the other powers on, but with no video. I'm going to be starting off with the no video one, to see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. So let's head over to the workbench and see what we have to work with today. Here it is, the Commodore 64. This one powers on, but has no video, not even a black screen. So, let's open it up and get to the good stuff. For this, there is only three Phillips screws. Can't forget our bin so we don't lose anything. The keyboard top should come right off. Yeah, snaps like that always make me a little nervous I broke something. Carefully, I'll check the back to see how to correctly open this. Again, being careful, this plastic is 30 plus years old. Okay, so two clips are off with no damage. Let's get that third one with the same luck. Simple. Now we'll have to unplug the keyboard from the motherboard. Next, the LED. We'll set that keyboard off to the side for now. Now we can pull back this FCC cardboard. And this is what the inside of your Commodore 64 looks like, depending on the model. I've opened up a few of these and each one has been a little different. Let's get this motherboard out. For that, we have four Phillips screws to take out. This back metal plate is soldered on. To get it off, we'll have a few different spots to desolder so that we can test those capacitors. While the soldering iron is heating up, I'm going to take these covers off to see if there's more caps. This one's on there pretty good. Finally got it. Yeah, there's a bit of thermal compound on here. Not dried up either. The soldering iron is ready to go. So let's get some flux on here. At first, I was going to completely desolder each of these. Then it dawned on me, I don't have to remove the solder. I can just move those tabs when the solder is melted. That will be a lot easier and save some time. And we'll just repeat that process for all the others. This one has all of that metal around it acting as a heat sink. So it'll take just a little more time. Careful around these plastic parts.
Eh, I almost forgot about that last one on the RF box there. Again, that metal is acting as a big heatsink. So I'm just gonna leave this one and just be careful not to break it. I'm gonna finish removing this. It normally has two Phillips screws holding it down, but I removed one earlier when taking the motherboard out. Here I'm just looking at all the caps. The smaller ones are all the same type, so that will make testing them pretty easy. All of these caps are actually in pretty good shape. Now I'm going to reseat all of the socketed chips. Sometimes that fixes issues you might be having. When replacing these, make sure to put them back in the correct way. Each chip will have something that looks like this on them. The socket, along with the board, will also have the same thing on them, letting you know which way it goes in. Eh, careful putting these back in. Those pins bend super easy. Making sure it's in all the way. Again, just going to be repeating this process with all the socketed chips. I'm going to clean off that old thermal compound with some isopropyl alcohol before removing this chip. And at this point, I noticed whoever put those sockets in, put them in the wrong way. Luckily, I noticed that. And I'm now going to flip those chips around to the correct way. So I guess, don't always trust the socket. Best to check the board itself. Alright, now that I got all those chips back in the correct way, let's plug this in and see if that fixed it. It's plugged in. Power on. Switching the channel selector to see if I get anything. Still nothing. I'm just going to double check with one that I know works. Make sure it's not my cables or anything. Okay, so it looks like I still have some more work to do. So today we took apart a Commodore 64, tested the capacitors, and reseeded the socketed chips. 
Unfortunately, the easy fix wasn't enough for this one. Next video, I'll try a few other things I can think of. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. And if you really enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe, as it really helps out me and the channel quite a lot. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.